Hello and good evening to you. Welcome to News 360. It's live on news up here at Adesawe in Kanda. My name is Alfred Okansi. I'm Natalie Fort. A look at the top stories this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. Leader of group suspected to be planning to declare the Volta region independent granted bail. Criminal Investigations Department of Ghana Police Service invites National Chairman of the NDC, Samuel of Osampofo, to assist in investigations into cases of kidnapping and fire outbreaks in various parts of the country. Also ahead this evening, Coalition of Civil Society Organizations Against Environmental Degradation cautioned state agencies against any attempts to frustrate criminal proceedings against Chinese national Helen Huang, arrested for illegally transporting Rosewood. And on the foreign front tonight, Western countries participating in Iran nuclear deal warn Tehran there will be serious consequences if it takes steps at violating its own terms. The details of these stories and much more news coming to you live here on News 360. You could watch us on our website, it's 3news.com. And all across the world on Facebook, it's TV3 Ghana. And remember, we're also live on DSTV channel 279 as well. Let's get interactive as we go on in the bulletin tonight. The Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service has invited the National Chairman of the NDC, Samuel Fosuampofo, to assist in investigations into cases of kidnapping and fire outbreaks in various parts of the country. Now, a letter signed by the CID Director General, COP Mame Yatiwa Adodankwa, asked him to appear on Thursday, May 9, at 2 p.m. According to the police CID, intelligence gathered suggests that some of the kidnappings and fire outbreaks are being orchestrated by various unidentified groups persons and individuals. The CID added some persons picked up for interrogation and investigation have mentioned the name of the NDC national chairman Samuel Ofoswampofo as part of a grand scheme uh, designed to cause fear and panic in the country. Ebram Maliba is a member of the NDC legal team and by extension a member of the legal team of Samuel of who is the national chairman of the NDC. Maliba, I thank you very much for your time this afternoon on the telephone. I mean, I'm sure you've seen this particular statement from the CID inviting Samuel of on on these uh, issues that they raised. First of all, as a counsel, what is your immediate reaction to this particular invitation that we're hearing of? That letter is a political charade perpetrated by the MPP using the CID. How are you able to prove that? that? Clearly, Ofuzan Pofo is before court. And don't forget that when this matter was still at the CID, the CID charged Ofuzan Pofo, our chairman, with kidnapping. They changed that charge, brought in some other charges, subsequently dropped those charges, and now preferred the charges that we are facing in court. The question is, if the CID believed that Ofosuan Pofo was engaged in kidnapping, why did they drop those charges at that time? So, uh, respectfully, I, I'm, I'm looking at the statement, and I, I just because of the point you just made, I'm looking at the statement, and they are referring to s testimonies given by persons who are being investigated and, in, and interrogated in relation to these two incidents, that's fire outbreaks and kidnappings, and that they want him to come and assist in investigations. That doesn't really sound like a conclusive statement uh, uh, blaming him or alleging that he's actually involved in this. These are frivolous allegations, my brother. What we are doing now, I just stepped out of a meeting, is holding a meeting to discuss the letter that was sent to our chairman by the CID. So we are in a meeting. Mm. We would proffer our legal advice to our chairman 
and tomorrow he will act on it appropriately. And are you going to attend to this particular invitation? I mean, if you're going to give us an indication? And that is why I'm saying that we are currently in a meeting discussing this letter as a legal team. Our decision will be communicated to the chairman of the party who will subsequently act on it. So as to whether he would attend upon the CRE invitation or not, we would make that available to him, the, the, the advice available to him tomorrow, and then he will act on it. I mean, I ask this because I've heard some other uh, executives and elements of your party suggesting that he is not going to attend to this particular invitation. And, and if I'm going to ask you any question on that tangent, being an officer of, of the court, how injurious will that be if he decides to go with this particular option of not going to uh, the CID offices on this particular issue? I am an officer of the court, but I'm not an officer of the police. This matter is at the police station. And that is why I'm saying that we as a legal team who bear the responsibility to advise him, would advise him. Those executives who are making categorical statements are speaking as politicians. But we, as a legal team, are currently locked up in a meeting and are discussing the letter. We would advise our client appropriately for tomorrow. Zamaliba, I want to thank you very much for your time this evening. Ibrahim Zamaliba is a member of the legal team of Samuel Ofosu and Pofo and the NDC as well. In some other news this evening, the Accra Psychiatric Hospital is running out of food supplies. The Public Relations Officer of the hospital, Dr. Ama Buedu, who made the disclosure, said she does not understand why mental health care is not captured under the National Health Insurance Scheme as government subvention to the facility wanes. Mental health care delivery, per the law, is supposed to be free. But unfortunately, that's not the situation here at the Accra Psychiatric Hospital. I am here at the OPD and all patients who visit this particular facility will have to pay for services rendered them. But why have we gotten to this stage? Our budget for the year was 6.8 million, but just 1.2 million was approved last month that we received the first uh, of government subvention, and therefore we have to take care of their feeding, clothing, I mean, all other things that they would need. And if government support is not coming in as expected, how do we take care of these patients? How do we continue keeping this hospital? Dr. Amaboedu indicated that the facility is overwhelmed by the issue as patients continue to complain about the situation. When we started charging, they, they didn't see why we suddenly would ask them to pay. And we still have people who come in and say, I don't have enough money, I don't see why I should be paying. Some even threaten to sue us because the mental health law says that it's supposed to be free. However, if we do an assessment and we think that an individual is unable to pay genuinely, we have a way of going around it. We're able to take care of them from our the little IGF that we generate. She questioned the neglect of mental health in the National Health Insurance Scheme. It is our wish to be able to take care of everybody, but somebody has to pay for the services. The um, law of mental health act states that mental health care is supposed to be free, but I think that in the, in the general sector, it appears free because the health insurance takes care of that. So people go in, they don't really have to pay anything. But somebody is taking care of the services. However, we don't do mental or we do not um, accept um, the NHIS in mental health care. A woman who had sent her child to the facility complained about the charges. I came here with a national health insurance card, but it was not accepted. I was referred to Kolebu for some tests to be conducted. It is not easy to come by money these days. Meanwhile, the facility, she hinted, is running out of food items. The Accra Psychiatric Hospital is a country's premier mental health facility. 
Now, a group calling itself Concerned Fishermen and Canoe Owners Association is urging government not to agree to the calls for a change in the proposed closed fishing season period. Chief Fisherman of Bung, Ni Tete Ashong, disputed claims by the Ghana National Canoe Fishermen Council that the May 15 date would not yield the desired results. The Minister for Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Elizabeth Afolekwe, announced the observation of the closed fishing season for both artisanal fishermen and industrial trawlers last month. We have done very good stakeholder consultations. Something that we were told that we, we, we didn't do enough last year. So we continued from last year till today. And so we cannot have any small group of people coming after the announcement of the close season to say that, no, we will not accept the date. May 15 to June 15 is scheduled for the artisanal fishermen. While industrial trawlers are to observe their close season from August 1, to September 30, but the dates proposed did not go down well with some members of the Ghana National Canoe and Fishermen Council dividing the fishermen front. Executive Director of the Ghana National Canoe and Fishermen Council, Ni Abioch Rukwanda IV, at a news conference said, the dates announced by the sector ministry has no scientific basis. Show that any process declared and implemented before July would not yield or produce any impact or value and will therefore be absolutely useless, so to do. In July, the impact would be 20% or more, which is obviously significant and valuable than the 5% or less to be achieved in May and June. Also, having been made aware of the critical situation with regard to the level of depletion of fish stocks, especially the small pelagics, the fishermen's obvious choice, therefore, is 1st July to 31st July 2019, which is based on the best scientific evidence available, and not 15 May to 15 June, which has no scientific basis, and therefore will not produce the needed impact. On Wednesday, members calling themselves the Concerned Fishermen and Canoe Owners Association from all the coastal regions in the country converged in Accra to set the record straight. The group indicated the sector ministry engaged majority of the fishermen before coming out with the proposed date for the temporary ban. Chief Fisherman Fokbun, Nitete Ashon, wants the fishing regulatory agency to bite during the period. The prejudice and fragmented attempt to represent all fishing enclaves with five fishermen from Zone 1 in Accra Accra region can only be described as de desperate attempts to crouch onto credibility in the face of apparent vainness. We would also like to use this medium to ask the ministry to suspend the supply of premiums during the close season as we pledge our support for MOFAD and the law enforcement agencies to deal with anyone found breaching the close season. It is seven days for the closed fishing season for artisanal miners to come into force. The one-month-long program is intended to recover the depleting fish stock in the Ghanaian territorial waters, but the friction between stakeholders is getting keener. A study conducted by the University of Cape Coast in collaboration with USAID reveals that the closed fishing season, when observed in August, would increase pelagic fish stock by 20%, 7% in June, 20% in July, and 5% in May. But the fishermen disputed the findings from the study. The scientists have said that the July is the best uh, time for the close season. Some of us, we don't know because we have never seen the uh, 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 scientific data before. We have not seen it. So when they are telling us that uh, July is the uh, the best time for the, for the close season with the fishermen who have been going to see no, no best in, in the sea because they are in the office and they are using their machine, machines to control the fishermen which we did not agree. 
Washington News 360. On to MTN Vision Reports this evening as Emmanuel Gulari takes his turn and highlights on the deplorable state of roads at Nyangpanduri in the northeast region. This is a struggle we have found ourselves here in Nyangpanduri in northeast region. Five minutes from the station in Nyangpanduri towards Nalergu, this long bus got stuck because it is muddy and unmotorable. From Nalego to Bunkurugu, the road is bad. You can hear the sound. The bus cannot go. We are calling for urgent attention to make sure that this road is attended to before this torrential rains actually emerges in this particular season. We are talking of the middle of Nankwanduri that this is happening. No one can go anywhere. This is Emmanuel Gulari reporting live from Nankwanduri in Northeast region. Certainly a situation needing very urgent attention there. Now, we encourage you to also send to us your visual report via WhatsApp number. It's 055-1433-044. Remember, you're also live here on News 360. Remember, you're also live on DSTV Channel 279. All across the world on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Stay with us. We're coming to business. Welcome back to News 360. Let's get into the business segment this evening as Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry Robert Ahum Kalinsi has challenged the Ghana Export Promotion Authority to focus on scaling up the country's exports. At an event in Accra to launch the, the anniversary's 50th celebrations, he noted that the competence of the authority would continue to be measured by the country's export profile. Ghana Export Promotion Authority, GEPA, was established to develop and promote Ghana's exports after the realization that traditional exports alone would not sustain the economy. The authority therefore focused on diversifying the country's export base. Focus on priority areas of export, which will help us achieve our set target of 5.3 billion in 2021. To achieve our mandate ahead of us, we have laid out a number of strategic initiatives to aggressively market our very well-made Ghana goods and services. GEPA acquired its authority status in 2011 in accordance with Ghana's revised laws at 1998. To ensure that the next 50 years of GEPA's life is a greater impact than the previous 50 years of GEPA's life. I didn't say pineapple, I said fruit juices. Chocolate, I didn't say cocoa, I said chocolate. Aluminium in terms of cans, not alumni. Deputy Minister of Trade Ahum Kalinse said the true work of GEPA is in its impact on the economy and its role in the country's industrial transformation. He urged the authority to focus on developing the profiles of exporters and to add value to the country's export profile. And in the transport sector, four firms have expressed interest to undertake the railway interconnectivity project on build, operate and transfer basis. Of the four, one will be selected to partner government on the project. The project is to facilitate trade and development between Ghana and Burkina Faso for transportation service of both freight and passengers. Speaking at the tender opening ceremony, the Railways and Development Minister, Joe Gatti, says government will ensure value for money for all projects. I wish to assure the good people of Ghana and Burkina Faso of our continuous commitment to ensure the realization of this great mission to link the two countries by an efficient and effective railway network to facilitate the social economic growth of the two neighboring countries and to let the two countries grow from strength to strength. A joint committee of experts was formed to implement the project which spans from the port of Tema through Ho, Hohoi, Yendi, Tamale, Paka, on to Wagadugu. 
And we do know that the flat rate fare for the Accra Tema Railway has in fact been reduced from five to three CDs. Let's turn some other business stories as Chief Executive Officer of the National Entrepreneurship and Innovations Plan, John Kuma, has urged Ghanaian startups to be open to sharing equity in exchange for funding. He was speaking at the official opening of an investment company, Quick Angels, in Accra. Quick Angels is a fully owned Ghanaian investment company which provides capital for business startups in exchange for convertible debt or ownership equity. Services usually include startup equity financing, early stage equity financing, business growth equity financing, SME equity financing and buying and selling of businesses. The new company aims to expand existing businesses by making available the requisite capital and premium management expertise. Chief Executive Officer of the National Entrepreneurship and Innovations Plan, NEIP, John Kuma, encouraged Ghanaian businesses to diversify their funding sources and avoid over-reliance on loans. You don't have to pay the money that they put into your business. They are not asking you to pay back. That is why they are angel investors. What you need to do is to convince them. Most of startups in Ghana, I don't know whether by cultural design, or by training, they are not interested in sharing their equity with potential investors in their business. Many startups are complaining today for help, but when you offer them the help and you give them condition to partake in their, in their future prospect, not current prospect, future prospect and success of their business, they say no. Quick Angels intends to partner existing businesses and startups to provide strong financial support in exchange for a percentage of equity redeemable in future profits. Call our office lines on 0302-267-381 or 0302-267-382 for assistance. The company stressed its dedication to investing in indigenous startups and urge entrepreneurs to be proactive irrespective of business model. So that's it for the business segment this evening. But there's a lot more business news on our website. It's 3news.com. And do take note that we're having our startup fair and funding summit at the Kumasi Mall on the 17th of May. So do take note or visit our premises to be participate in that program. Alfred? Thank you, Natalie. With business, an Accra High Court has granted a 250,000 bail to the man of uh, seven members of the group have been remanded in police custody to reappear on May 22. Here's a report by Komla Kluche. The eight suspects arrested in Ho and charged with conspiracy to commit treason and abetment of unlawful assembly and offensive conduct conducive to the breach of peace. Senior State Attorney Winifred Sapon reading out the charges prayed the court to deny the suspect's bail on grounds that the offense was a serious one and that the group with the intent of declaring independence on May 9 may carry out their action if not denied bail. She noted the first appearance was to remand the suspect since the High Court in Accra did not have jurisdiction over the matter as they were arrested in home. The state prosecutors also said they needed time to do further investigation as the CID and Interpol were in charge of the investigations. 85-year-old chairman of the group, Charles Komi Kujoji, popularly known as Papavi Hogbedeto, Bisa Akoli, Kofi Jireke, Thompson Chigbe, Benjamin Agbajada, Agbanyaga Akuji, Freeman Blikaku Umpechiri Kujo, were airlifted by the 66th Artillery Regiment from Ho to Accra and they had been placed in police custody to assist in investigations. The 85-year-old chairman, Komi Kujoji, told the court when they were arrested, they were denied access to their lawyers, the reason they did not have legal representation. He also said they were kept incommunicado, assuring the court to grant them bail since they were no risk 
the panel of three judges led by Justice Jerome Nkrumah granted the 85-year-old 250,000 cities bill with two sureties, one to be justified. The others are to remain in custody and reappear on May 22, 2019. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Sakra. Some on that subsequently. Now, the opposition National Democratic Congress has reiterated its call for the voter ID cards to be made part of the primary documents for the ongoing Ghana card registration. At a news conference in Accra addressed by its Deputy General Secretary Peter Utukana, the party claimed majority of Ghanaians would not be captured in the exercise if the voter ID card is not made a requirement. The Deputy General Secretary of the NDC insisted the exercise will end up destabilizing Ghana. Per the laws governing proof of identification for the Ghana card registration, the National Identification Authority must only register persons who produce a passport, birth certificate or driver's license. He explained that most Guineans do not have the document being demanded as prerequisite for the registration, hence a lot of people will end up not getting registered. The implementation of the provisions of the Act will deny vast majority of the population the opportunity to acquire the Ghana card. Due to the limitations imposed on the ordinary Ghanaian, who obviously by no fault of theirs do not have birth certificate, passports, and other rather scarce identification documents, they are going to be denied this all-important opportunity of having an identification document that will classify them as Ghanaians. He stressed that the exercise will not promote the stability of the state as it will only seek to make some Ghanaians become more Ghanaian than others, which will be in direct contravention of the 1992 constitution. The NDC remains completely opposed to this obnoxious tactics of non-inclusion of the voter ID card as a primary identification document for the registration. The NDC has accused the EC and government of plans to use the Ghana card to rig the 2020 elections. The party also alleged that some MPP officials were arrested on Tuesday for registering persons for the Ghana card after 8 p.m. in a private residence near Aoudome in Accra. This registration exercise was being done after registration hours, around 8 p.m., three clear hours after the close of registration. They were busted by some vigilant members of the community who had observed the suspicious activities for some time before deciding to confront the personnel involved in this more practice. The party has also revealed its earlier position in asking members, including the minority in parliament, to boycott the registration. So we have called on all our members to go and register, to fully participate and register, and also follow keenly the process so that the shenanigans of the MPP would be exposed and dealt with so that it doesn't come hunting us in future. Well, a coalition of civil society organizations against environmental degradation in the five regions of the north, the Baobab market has cautioned state agencies against any attempt to frustrate criminal proceedings against the Chinese national Helen Huang, who was arrested in Tamale for illegally transporting rosewood. Uh, the group at a news conference made reference to the case of Aisha Huang, another Chinese national who was arrested for illegal mining but was deported. Helen Wan, a Chinese national 43, was arrested by police in Tamale while transporting two 20-footer trucks loaded with rosewood Tuesday, May 7. The arrest, which was effected by police officers on duty at the Vitin barrier, saw the police impounding the said trucks. Suspect Helen was subsequently granted a police inquiry bill. But the Barber Market at a news conference said it accepts nothing less than a court proceeding against the suspect. The government must swiftly prosecute Helen Huang, the Chinese national, arrested yesterday under the right laws of Ghana. 
The coalition made reference to the deportation of Aisha Wan, another Chinese national who was involved in illegal mining. Members say they will keenly follow the judicial proceedings to its final conclusions. The Bauer market would closely monitor developments of Miss Helen Wan's issue as they unfold within the legal confines of the country. Meanwhile, the suspect failed to report to the regional police CID on Wednesday, May 8, as was required of her. Now, several household items have been destroyed in a fire that gutted a six-flat story building at Amakum, a suburb of Kumasi. The fire is reported to have started from one of the apartments when most of the occupants had left for work. Here's reports by Beatrice Spio Gabra. It took fire personnel close to two hours to bring the fire under control. An eyewitness said she saw smoke billowing from one of the rooms on the top floor. About 20 occupants of the flat, including children, were confused. Others whose rooms were not affected by the fire half packed their furniture and other items outside the building. The landlord of says the flats will have to be renovated before the tenants can reoccupy them. Assembly member for the area is appealing for support to re-roof the building to provide shelter for the displaced occupants. So live on News 360, stay with us. Right, so tonight we'll start with Wendy Shea. The Uber driver hit maker appears not to be interested in Shatawale's marriage proposal. In a chat with Johnny Hughes on the New Day Morning Show, Wendy Shea disclosed she hopes to give birth to three children, but certainly not with Shatawale. She was reacting to a question on whether she will accept the gringo hit maker's proposal. So what does the future look like for Wendy Shea? Definitely, I want to take Ghana to the top. So I'm definitely working hard to get to the Grammys mm. and the BETs and all of that. And yeah, my name is going to be a household name mm. in some years mm. to come. But really, for... Let's talk about VGMs. Congratulations, Thank by the you way. Very much. So you have how many nominations? Three. Three? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. You are in a male-dominated category. Yes. yes. <sighs> How do you feel? I feel very honored because it's not easy in this male-dominated industry to be recognized as a female that fast. So definitely, it is a blessing to me, and I'm praying that I'm gonna win. <laughs> Your fans <laughs> voting. Yeah, my fans are voting. Yeah. It's been 15, 16 hours after you said you were going to give Shatawale his response. I'm still on it. You're still thinking about yeah. it. But would you honestly want to marry Shatawale? <laughs> you know what? They ask me, "What is your ideal man or what, whatever?" But right. I don't, I don't have one. So you don't have an ideal man. No, I don't. Anything have goes. Any, anything goes. Really? Anything, as far as you're compatible, you're fine. Would you marry Shatawale? <laughs> I'm still going to give you the answer of camera. You're cool, guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, open minded. You, know, you were yeah, praising I him. I mean, yeah, and I'll still say that. You crush I got on closer, him? Oh, uh, no, no, not that one. Not that <laughs> one. But it, definitely, when I got closer, I, I realized that he's far from what people actually say about him. I see. Yeah. The song in the background opens with you and Shatawale on a bonnet. How many children do you all have with Shatawale? If all things go well. I'm not even thinking about that. I'm still going to give you... You want to have children? I, I want to have children, how many? I, I, but not now. How many? But not with Shatawale. Okay, I don't okay, know. okay. so how many children do you want to have uh, with or without Shatawale? If God permits, I want to have three kids. Three kids? Yeah. I see. Well, for those of you peddling rumors that they may be dating, one will say and show. Away from that, all roads lead to the Independence Square on Saturday, May 11, as Ghana's A-list artists gear up for entertainment fans at the VGMA Experience Concert. Artists expected to headline the match talked about concert includes Sakodie, Shatawali, Stoneboy and Samini. Yeah. Mm. Shout out to man gringo. Yes, gringo, ringo. Wow. Hey, man, dingo. In a countdown to music's biggest night, the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards, organizers have decided to treat fans to a marathon of music at the Independence Square. 
The experience concert is expected to set the tone for the 20th VGMA scheduled for Saturday, May 18 at the Accra International Conference Centre. Topmost skanker Stoneboy will be on hand to excite patrons. The SM boss Shatawale will be live in action. And of course, the SAC natives will not be left out. The VGMA's most decorated musician, Sakodye, is expected to spice up the concert with a remarkable performance. The match talked about experience concert will also feature performances from Kwesiata, Adina, and master performer Samini. to expect a night of pure entertainment and an unforgettable experience. Chatter House has promised to ensure the venue is secured enough for patrons. The experience concert is open to all at no cost and will be aired live on TV3. So now you know where to be on the 11th of May, the Independence Square. That's it for Entertainment News. There's more news for 60. I'm Miriam Osteyajman. I'm black and very proud. Have a good evening. <laughs> wow. My name is Alfred Okanse. On behalf of the rest of the team, we say thank you. And I am black and proud. And I'm Natalie Ford. Thanks so much for watching. I'm black and proud.